cheeky domain and range parametric equations, Cartesians, sketching, all of that good stuff in one question. We've got a nine mark exam question. A curve C has these parametric equations, determine the domain and range of the curve C. Okay, so we know that the domain is to do with the x values, so it's to do with this, and the range is to do with the y values, to do with this. So they both depend on t. It says t is an element of the real numbers, meaning t can be anything on the real plane. So it can be whole numbers, negative numbers, fractions, pi, so you name it. So the best way to do this is to do a sketch. So for the domain, this is where it becomes a little bit strange because we're used to plotting x on the x-axis, right? But here, it's rearranged for x. So you can think of x as being like the new y value. So x is over here, and it is dependent on t. Okay? And we're going to sketch this graph. x squared minus 4 looks like this. So think of this as being y, uh, y equals x squared minus 4. Yeah, y and x. So look like this. So this here is minus 4. Now, you're reading what x values are valid here. Well, you can see that x can be any one of these going up, isn't it? Yeah? So for any t value, yeah, when t is 0, you get minus 4. When t is 1, you're going to get something else. So for all t values, the x values are defined. Yeah, if you read across, basically. And it's defined for anything above minus 4. So actually what we're doing here is we're reading the range for both. So here, x clearly can be anything more than minus 4. Okay? So all the x values are defined above minus 4. Now in terms of y, so you have t and y. If we were to sketch this, we're probably going to have to factorize it first, right? So y, because we always want to find the roots. y equals, factorizing out t, you'd get t squared minus 4. Which you can factorize even more to get y is t, t plus 2, t minus 2. So that goes through 0, minus 2, and 2. And it's a positive cubic. All right. Now... What are the y values defined for here? Well, actually, this is going down to negative infinity, and this is going up to infinity, infinity and beyond than that. So it just means all the y values are defined here. Yeah, so y is going to go up to infinity and down to minus infinity for all values of t. So here we're just going to say y is the element, or is an element of the real numbers depending on the t value. So here we go. That is that first bit done. Show that the Cartesian equation can be written like this. Now, the way we do this is we, um, what do we do? We usually rearrange one of the t values and then make our substitution, right? Now, the thing about this is that we have different powers. But as part of my working in part A, I notice that that t squared minus 4, t squared minus 4, is actually here, which is very convenient for me. So we have x equals t squared minus 4, and y I can rewrite like this. So I have y is tx. I just need to work out t. I can rearrange this. So I get x plus 4 is t squared, and I'm going to root both sides. So I get root x plus 4 is t. Sub that in here. Uh, let's put the x first. And then we square both sides. So we get y squared is x squared, square, square, square. Okay, that's proved. Can you guys see that properly? Yeah, let's go. Okay, so part C is asking us to sketch this graph. Sketch this. All right. Battery died, can't remember what I was saying, but something about, I don't think we've sketched stuff like this before, all right? Or you might not have seen 
how to sketch stuff like this before. But what we have done is sketching y equals, not y squared. Well, let's focus on the y equals. So let's see what this would look like if it said y equals all of this. Well, you'd find the roots, so you're going to get x equals 0 and minus 4. Now think about this, because it's squared, it's a double root. It's only going to be a tangent to the graph. It's not going to go through. The x-axis is going to be a tangent at that point. And it's a cubic, right? So it's going to come up like this and look like this. Okay? Now, these are my y values and these are my x values. But something we have to be very careful of because it's y squared. If I wanted to work out y in this function, I would have to root both sides. By the way, this is not actually a function in this graph, say. If I wanted to work out y, I would have to square root both sides. But if this is negative, I can't square root it anymore. So here I'm looking at where would my function be negative, okay? This here is a function, okay? Where would it be negative? It's down here. This gives me values that are negative which I would not be able to square root, okay? So first things first is I need to eliminate the section which would be negative, like that. So I'm only going to sketch this for y being bigger than or equal to 0, all right? So I get all of these values. Now what happens when I change it to y squared? And it's actually a simple concept. I have faith you guys are going to understand this. Well, here you have the y's being 0, right? So if this whole value is 0, yeah, when this whole value is 0 and you square root it, it's still 0, okay? So you're still going to get this minus 4 and 0, okay? However, what happens when the function of, you know, x squared x plus 4 is 4, for example? Okay, if this value here is 4 and you square root it, you're going to get plus or minus 2. So here, all of these values, when you square root them, they're just going to become smaller in size, but you're going to get the negative version as well. Okay, and that's basically it. All that happens is this is just going to get reflected under because you're taking the positive and the negative values into account. So it's going to look like a kind of fish fish in a rice cake, something like that. I mean, you know, it's just a sketch. It's going to kind of do a bit more like this if I make it a bit more continuous. Something like that is what it would look like. So just so I could, you can think of it as a reflection, but it's not exactly a reflection, but the game is the game, isn't it? It's going to look something like that. So yeah. Hopefully that explanation makes sense, yeah, in terms of how we deal with the y compared to the y squared. It's simply just your square rooting, so you're going to get the plus or minus version, and you had to get rid of the negative. So kind of a bit like the modulus function, but uh, not really. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm yapping now. Guys, if you learned something today, I'd really appreciate if you hit the like button, subscribe for more maths content, and if you're interested in my maths courses, there is a link in the description uh, for more information. And if you want to join the Lung Gang Reddit, if you want to submit your own questions, then details are also in the description. I'll see you in the next video. Nice.